my punjabi bra raja puru is porous of sikandar ne porous se ki thi ladai wo ki thi ladai to main kya karu pride of punjab won a territory twice that of his original territory raja puru ne शर्मा and i teach history for a living i do have a few more credentials that have been listed in the description box i shadow and itihas is a passion project where in each episode i do an i make up look like this one while talking about a particular topic from itihas which is history and if that is something that catches your fancy do hit the subscribe button please note that there is a list of sources listed in the description box that you can go ahead and check out in case today's topic fascinates you or you can just read it to fact check everything that i will be blabbering in this particular video and now that all that is sorted i am super excited to talk about today's topic today we talk about my punjabi bra raja puru my people mine in case you haven't guessed by my awesome sense of humor that i am also a punjabi and for those of you greek people who are like who's raja puru raja puru is porous of sekandar ne porous se ki thi ladai jo ki thi ladai to main kya karu I'll stop singing and I'll let Muhammad Rafi do his magic. Sikandar ne poras se ki thi ladai, do ki thi ladai, to me kya karu? Don't be like this guy. He doesn't know anything. The battle was a very important battle, known as the Battle of Hydaspes, which is the Greek name of the Jhelum River, and was fought between. Raja Puru and Sikandar or Alexander of Macedon and although Raja Puru's story is so much more than just this fight we unfortunately don't know anything about him beyond this fight why do we know so little about him what was the battle of hydaspes and most of all who was raja puru all this while i do this pine green moss green पता नहीं जी कि रहता है जेड़ा भी कलर थोड़ा ना समझ आंदा ओ ही ला लियो चले फिर सो हु वाज पुरु राजा पुरु और किंग पोरस ऑफ ग्रीक सोर्सेस वाज द रूलर ऑफ द लैंड्स बिटवीन द रिवर्स जहलम एंड चना स्ट्राबो हु इज अ ग्रीक राइटर टेल्स अस दैट पुरुस डोमिनियन वाज एन एक्सटेंसिव एंड फर्टाइल डिस्ट्रिक्ट कंटेनिंग अराउंड 300 cities another source diodorus of sicily informs us that porus had an army of 50000 foot soldiers about 300 horses over 1000 chariots and 130 elephants elephants reminds me that porus also named as fur in firdausi's shanama which is an 11th century farsi text is said to have had a much bigger army than that of sikandar and also an army that was better armed primarily because of the elephants uru was in fact one of the first few subcontinental kings to introduce elephants in his army a move that will single handedly impact the armies of many subcontinental kings to come where control of elephants or the quantity of elephants in a king's army could decide how weak or powerful the army was previously in tupuru the empire of magadh in 6th century bce sought to control the forests of jharkhand primarily to gain control of elephants for the army post rajapuru 
the moral empire would also seek to gain elephants for a powerful army so raja puru wrote to war atop an elephant against alexander and was one of the first few known kings to have done so in fact we are lucky that we get a glimpse of how puru would have looked atop an elephant since he features in one of alexander's coins the coin was minted in babylon as a coin of victory over alexander's battles in the subcontinent here sikandar fought many battles but only puru features in his coins atop an elephant about to launch a javelin at alexander that puru made a lasting impact on alexander is not just born in his coins or the greek sources that talk about the battle but also in the final outcome of the battle which we will talk about in detail in a bit but know that puru before alexander met him in battle was clearly powerful enough to irk his neighbors who brought alexander finally to puru's doors in curtius's account which is a first century ce roman source the rival of puru who invited alexander to his kingdom of taxila described puru as superior in power and influence in comparison to most of taxila's neighboring kingdoms the battle between puru and alexander was not only militarily interesting but also had a solidly fascinating result porus may have lost the battle but won a territory twice that of his original territory and unfortunately that's all that we know about this man most of his life is preserved in oral tradition wherein the imagination of people puru had a staggering 7 feet 5 inches of height so why do we know so short a tail of such a tall man the primary reason for that is that there is no mention of puru in the subcontinental texts that is the sanskrit and the prakrit texts since a sense of history as we know it or understand it today was largely first introduced by the tarikh tradition brought in by the turks and also to some extent kalhans rajtarangini which is a 12th century sanskrit text based on kashmir only greek texts mention him and they obviously do it from their own perspective therefore they only mention the battle of jhelum or hydaspes and without a doubt alexander is their hero and later on when the colonial people come to the subcontinent alexander becomes their hero too coming of alexander for the raj signified a relatable point of indian history where a european comes to the subcontinent to colonize it just like the british were doing then here again puru is relegated his role in the subcontinent's history is marginalized since the british interest in the battle was to make presentist claims and hail alexander as a man of culture and civilization but our man puru does receive a philip in the nationalist writings but here also his history is overshadowed by hyperbole where he is hailed as the stiffest competition sikandar ever faced which eventually forced sikandar to turn back a narrative which isn't really based on any evidence in other nationalist writings puru may have been defeated but his vengeance is unleashed upon the generals of alexander by chandragupt maurya who established a kingdom which the nationalist writings exaggerate to no end in case you still haven't guessed it it's the mauryan kingdom this nationalist fervor is best exemplified in sorab modi's 1941 movie sikandar where raja puru is first introduced to us in his court like this bharat ki jai ho bharat mata ki jai ho kaho kya samachar hai bharat mata it's a construct which is utterly modern and in the movie when puru learns 
that Sikandar is here to attack his kingdom, he says this. And Pradhan Ji, you have to send the Kalkot and Kulut to the king. But they will come, why will they not come? There is no other way, there is no other way, there is no other way. Write, we have done a lot of people in our country. If we have not done a lot of people in our country, then our country will say that we have done a lot of people. This idea of bringing various kingdoms together to fight an outsider, a false notion of national unity, since nation itself is a modern concept. But wait, I can't possibly be fact-checking a 1941 movie. This fact-checking movies is becoming a disease with me. Please send help. The larger point being that. The nationalist Puru is as ahistorical as the colonial one that the British wrote about. Of course, these were responses to colonial histories and were a way for Indians to reclaim their history as truly theirs, but didn't really fill the void in Puru's history. And therefore, let's discuss that one episode where Puru's history gets some limelight. The Battle of Hydaspes or the Battle of Jhelum. Alexander advanced towards Jhelum after defeating the Achaemenid monarch Darius III, who was the successor of Darius I, whose inscriptions on pillars and rocks alike really inspired Ashok's own inscriptions. We've discussed this in a previous episode. In case you haven't seen it, I'll link it here. Once he reaches Bactria and defeats the satrap of Bactria, the satrap were the Achaemenid governors. So once he defeats the satrap of Bactria, in Bactria, Alexander received an invitation to enter the Indian subcontinent by King Tuxilus, his actual name being King Ambhi. And Tuxilus was a title which was conferred upon him by Alexander. And the reason why Ambi invited Alexander is because he needed a powerful ally against his very powerful neighbor, our Raja Puru. Having thus been convinced by Ambi, Alexander marched against Puru via the salt range since the other route, which was the Grand Trunk Road route, was under the control of a ruler called Abhisaris, again a Greek name, which in Greek sources is mentioned as somebody who is in full support of Raja Puru. Alexander, assuming that like Ambi had so voluntarily surrendered to Alexander's rule, Puru would also follow suit. Tratius, again a Roman source, tells us that Sikandar sent an envoy to Puru who replied that he will certainly meet Sikandar, but only in battle. And for this battle, since Puru's territories were on the other side of Jhelum, the Jhelum had to be crossed, which Alexander did cross in the dark of rain and clouds, which gave advantage to Alexander. But of course, Puru knew this might happen, and he had a small contingent placed there already, and therefore, there was a small initial clash as soon as the river had been crossed, post which the main battle happened. Now, for the main battle, Puru's first line of defense were, of course, the elephants, which were interspersed with infantry to fill the gaps between the elephants. Then, the chariots on either extremes of the army, along with marginal Cavalry. The battle was swift and resulted in Sikandar's victory. One of the primary reasons for Puru's defeat was the heavy arrows used by his army, which required the archers to sit on the ground or to hold the bow steady with their left foot. Neither could be done since the army was fighting in wet conditions, making the ground slippery. Alexander's win, on the other hand, was speed. Since he left most of his infantry behind, taking only his cavalry and light infantry and letting the rest of his heavy infantry 
to catch up. Furthermore, Alexander exploited the gaps between Puru's elephants and overran his archers even before they could steady their bows. Lastly, Sikandar first attacked the flanks of Puru's army, which contained the chariots and the cavalry. And this he did by employing his mounted archers. And Alexander very smartly chose to tackle the elephants last. Post Puru's defeat, territories of Porus were restored to him and in fact additional territories next to the Ravi that were captured by Sikandar after defeating Puru were also given to Puru and he was made a tributary of Alexander. Here Alexander also resolved the fight between the King Taxiles or King Ambi and Puru. Alexander then resumed his onward march to Beas and the kingdoms in between, we are told, were captured by Sikandar thanks to the elephants that were supplied by Puru. Puru is therefore also one of those rare kings who fought a war, lost that war, but ended up having a kingdom twice the size of his previous kingdom. Talk about a win. Pride of Punjab, however, unfortunately was killed in 315 BCE by Eudemus, a military general of Alexander. But Puru's life became a lore so strong that it echoed in the Greek courts and India's nationalist movement. Yet a nerd like me sincerely hopes we knew a lot more about my Punjabi pra, Puru. Unfortunately, since we have almost nothing written about him in Sanskrit or Prakrit texts, it's likely we will continue to only know so little about him. And that is all that I have for you today. Please note that there are a list of sources listed in the description box that you can go ahead and check out in case Raja Puru's history fascinates you as much as it fascinates me or in case you just wanted to fact check everything that I've blabbered in the video. And before you just walk away, please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. And do let me know what is it that you would like me to talk about in the next episode of Eyeshadow and Itihas.